those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International. With the hyphen. Oh, right, YouTube, it's Mr. Mean. Take two. Computer went crazy on me for a minute. Hopefully, it doesn't happen again. Tonight's vi video RPG review Genesis by Fantasy Flight. This is hot off the presses. It came out, it was released to stores yesterday. I left the game store at lunchtime to go back to work. And when I called to reserve a copy, she said, It just came in right after you left. So, um,. I, I reserved it. She held it for me. I got this and a set of the dice. I left the dice downstairs, but they pretty much are exactly the same as the Star Wars dice. Everybody's pretty familiar with them. You can go on Fantasy Flight's website and look at them, so I don't, I don't think it's really a need to, for me to tout the dice and say, ooh, look, pretty dice. They are cool dice. They're almost exactly the same as the, the uh, Star Wars dice. The icons are a little bit different, but yet strangely similar, so you can use your Star Wars dice. The fact that they're charging you 15 bucks for a pack of dice, I get it. It's a new game. It's a different, you know, different dice mechanic or different dice set. Same mechanics, different dice set. They want you to have the right dice for the game. And I wholeheartedly agree. Go buy a set. I bought a set. But I'm only buying one and I'm going to use them. Everybody else can use my five or six sets of Star Wars dice that I have. I don't see a need to go buy a whole bunch more dice because they're pretty much exactly the, in fact, they are exactly, the only difference is you get an extra red dice in the Genesis set, whereas in the Star Wars set, you only got one red dice. So that's helpful, but it's, again, it's not, it's not absolutely needed. Um, so Genesis by Fantasy Flight, what is this? This is... GURPS, Savage Worlds, um, Palladium, Rifts, uh, uh, Torg, it's whatever you want it to be. It's, it's a generic game system. It's Genesis. It's the birth of it all. It's the beginning. Um, it's very cool. In the back, there's a character sheet. I actually went on their website this afternoon. They've already got some stuff up, which is nice to see that they're supporting it right off the bat. Um, there is a world creation or setting creation uh, worksheet. It's just a basic worksheet. You've probably seen them all before. Um, and then there's, of course, the character sheet. And if that doesn't look reminiscent of Star Wars character sheets, I don't know what does. So anyway, the game is being well supported, so it appears. Um, the the uh, the book is gorgeous. Um, it's hardback. It is a good, uh, excluding character sheets, 253 pages. That is with a comprehensive two-page index. Um, of course, we've got our table of contents, and there's a whole bunch in here. Um, I'm not going to read the back, um, but I will give the bullet points. Complete rules for a unique and dynamic dice mechanic that goes beyond success and failure to give each die a roll the chance to change the story in dramatic and exciting ways. Yes, if that sounds vaguely like any of the Star Wars role-playing games from Fantasy Flight, that's exactly it. It uses the same funny-looking dice, polyhedral dice, just with icons instead of pips. Um, and so... It uses the method of failing forward. So you can still fail at a task resolution, a skill or whatever, trying to hit the bad guy, trying to pick a lock, trying to um, jump across a chasm, but you can still generate um, advantage and that advantage can, can fail forward and give you good things or positive things and or negative things and you could still succeed and still get a bunch of negative things. So it's a very narrative driven dice mechanic and I really like that. I liked it with the Star Wars games and I like it with this, which is what, compelled me to pick this up um, the next bullet is a character creation process that lets you play anything from a dwarven knight to a bioroid starship captain again this is a generic system so it's got to be flexible so you should be able to make pretty much any kind of hero you can think of uh, six settings with advice on customization themes gear and character option options that help you make each your own uh, each one your own. So again, that goes back to the settings or to the character creation process. We've got six different settings just in this book alone. I'm sure Fantasy Flight is going to throw out some splat books for some different settings. I can I can obviously see a superhero setting. I can see a steampunk setting, a Cthulhu setting, a fantasy setting. I mean, they've got it. For years, fans of uh, Fantasy Flight have been begging 
for a Tyranoth role-playing setting. Tyranoth is the setting of uh, Rune Wars and Descent. Um, those are two games made by Fantasy Flight. Descent is one of my all-time favorites. It's a miniature dungeon crawl game. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I've done a review on it. Go back in the archive and look. It's a fantastic game. It's a great two to five player game. You can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, Rune Wars just had a big launch uh, earlier this year for a miniatures based game, but it's also a, a hugely popular board game set in that same world of Tyranoth. So the starting adventure that they put out for this is a Tyranoth fantasy adventure. So I'm not going to be surprised, and I think their very first splat book is going to be a. Uh, a Tyranoth source book, a fantasy setting, which I'm excited to see. So the next bullet point is tones that let you play games of horror, intrigue, romance, mystery, pulp, and superheroes in any setting. So again, that goes back to the six settings that they're giving us in this book. Um, they're giving you all the tones to set the theme and the flavor and the, in the environment for those games. And then uh, last but not least, additional rules for vehicle combat, magic, computer hacking, and much, much more. Because this is claims and totes itself to be a generic system, they've, of course, got to cover in everything from archaic fantasy to sci-fi futuristic superheroes. And it's got pretty much everything in between in there. Um... So like I said, I think the Tyranoth setting fantasy book is going to be the first book that comes out since they've already got a fantasy uh, adventure already up on their website, which I'm going to try to run uh, for my, my group here real soon. Um, the only thing I was slightly miffed about is no pre-generated characters. I would have liked to have seen uh, you know five or six pre-generated Tyranoth flavored characters made just out of this book. I mean, don't include anything that might be in the Tyranoth book because A, you're giving away spoilers, and B, we want to, uh, we, we, you know, we want to leave it, we want to make characters out of this book and play them. So give us, you know, five or six fantasy generated characters out of this book and then include them with the, with the uh, adventure that was uh, hosted on their website. So. If you haven't been to the Fantasy Flight forums, they're very well supported. They're very active. I recommend go create yourself an account or just go lurk. Uh, but do yourself a favor, create an account, check things out. Um, I, I, you'll be pleasantly surprised. There's a lot of fan-made material. I myself haven't even gone to their uh, forum page for this except before it came out a couple of weeks ago. I was looking just to see if there's any new information. Um, so... Um, it's, it's very well supported. I'm going to go hit those forms tonight while I'm relaxing, and I'm going to just see if there's anything new up there. But uh, going through the book, we have a very comprehensive table of contents. Um, one of the big things that I tout in all my videos is art, the presentation of the book, the layout of the material that is being given to me. They've already got a formula that's tried and true. They've put out how many Star Wars books? So it looks on, I haven't gone completely through the book, but the basic glance through that I've given it this afternoon is it is the exact, pretty much the same format that they've used for Star Wars. Um, why not? It's a proven formula and it works. The book layout is fantastic. Now, of course, this book has a slightly different layout in its art and its tone. They go for a very, almost like an M.C. Escher style of black and white that fades into darker colors and or full color. Um, here's, a, here's a nice picture right here. Um, you can see like the chairs aren't completely drawn at the bottom, you know, and it fades in and out. Um, and the Game Master screen's got a little splash of color. The art is very consistent throughout the whole book. It's very well done. Um, I, I, can't, I can't rave enough about it. I actually kind of like it. I, I kind of, I want to play devil's advocate and say that I think the art's going to get some criticism. I think some people are going to bag on it and say, you know, it's just black and white and there should be color. And, you know, first of all, each one of those Star Wars books was, I believe, 60 bucks a pop, 55, 60 dollars a pop. This one's 40, 39.95 for a full RPG for the most part. You don't have to buy any other books after you buy this. You really don't. So this is not a bad deal. Um, here's another good piece of the art, a little spaceship, you know. So you can see they got a splash of color in there, but pretty much everything's in gray tones and black and white. So again, very well done. Um, just like the Fantasy Flight books, and this game is going to be compared to the Star Wars books. 
it, it's just it can't it's using the same type of dice the dice have different icons but they are very reminiscent of the star wars dice so uh my thing to you guys would be is you know everyone's going to say oh 15 dollars for another set of dice oh it's highway robbery don't buy them use the star wars dice the symbols are almost exactly the same the colors are the same so you can use your star wars dice uh, that's what I'm going to do. I have a set of the dice, but I'm not going to make my players go out and buy more dice because we've all invested in the Star Wars dice. No need to go buy more dice. Um, granted, I, I'm a completionist. I like to have everything for a game. If, if and when they release a GM screen for this, I will probably get it. It's just how I am um, if I'm financially able to. Um, but they go through the book. There's another solid piece of art right there. Very, uh, uh, you know... Warlord John Carter, Warlord of Mars, kind of pulp fictiony, you know, thing. I, I like it a lot. Um, they they go through the book, of course, telling you about the funny dice, um, and then how to create dice pools, just like the Star Wars. The layout is almost exactly the same as the Star Wars books, so I don't think I need to belabor the layout or the content. It's it's done done really well, um, and you know they go into these settings, which are are phenomenal. Um, and I mean, uh, there's instead of light side and dark side, like we have in, in the star Wars game, this game has story pools because again, this is more, um, instead of us telling us a star Wars story, it is telling us a, a story of our choosing and what we're making. We're not setting it in one specific world. So we have two types of story pools. Instead of light side and dark side, like we have in Star Wars, we have a story pool. Um, and uh, there are story points. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing as light side and dark side. So if, if my point being here is if you already know how to play Star Wars, you pretty much know how to play this game. Just open, broaden your horizons, open your mind, and be... Uh, agreeable to different terms that mean the same thing in the star wars game you'll find the correlation the common ground and it's not hard um and i mean just to point it out if you're familiar with star wars and the, the light side and dark side points destiny points you can use just about any small items to represent story points some suitable items are gaming tokens glass beads coins poker chips and you can also buy suitable gaming tokens from fantasy flight supply line they even include a hyperlink, but of course, it's a physical book, so it does you no good. Um, and it goes in to tell you how story points are used. So, you know what? You know those uh, light side and dark side points you got when you bought the box set of Star Wars and the dice? You can use those. Um, I could see where people wouldn't. I probably wouldn't want to because I don't want you to be thinking Star Wars while I'm running this game. I would probably use, like, I've got a bunch of glass gaming beads so I would use white and black, you know, or clear and black, um, um, and go from there. Um, they go right into character creation and everything that you need to know about creating your character, your character. Um, we have archetypes, which I think is very cool. Um, so, you know, depending on your setting, you know, you, so we've got, uh, the average human, We've got the laborer, you know, the guy's going to be pretty strong. We've got the intellectual and the aristocrat. And you can see the art there, very reminiscent. Uh, if I can get that in the picture, there you go. So, um, very nice. Uh, you choose a career, and they've got, you know, the scoundrel, the socialite, the soldier, the leader, the healer, uh, the entertainer, the tradesperson setting based careers so if you're doing and they even have these in parentheses so it says night parentheses fantasy um mad scientist can be steampunk or weird war a priest any setting using magic and al the magic alternate rules a druid any setting also using starship captain which would be for science fiction space opera or any setting using ve vehicle alternate rules wizard and then how to spend your experience points. So those are your base characters. Um, your soap value. Everything pretty much still works just like it did in uh, Star Wars. Your gear. Examples of some flaws. Um, complete skill list. Um, you know. I mean, it's the game's just done up well. Well, um, There's a another uh, nice, pretty nice piece of art right there. I don't know what that is. I haven't had a chance to read the context if Vivian tells it. Um, but, I mean, they go into everything. Um, 
I did read in the back they've got the superhero notes uh, to run a superhero game and with increased attributes and things like that. But then we go into, I wanted to get to the settings. Settings specific. So we get a whole bunch of adversaries, character options for when you advance, fantasy gear. Uh, so chapter one, fantasy. Oh, the settings, here we go. And oh, here's the sheet. So in, in the very first page of the of the settings is that, that world creation uh, checklist. So fantasy, steampunk, weird war, modern day, science fiction, or space opera. That's that's what we're we're given as our options for this book. And like I said, I am pretty sure they're gonna come out with some from flavors of their own. In fact, I can tell you right now, that is a piece of art from Tiranoff. Um, that is one of the characters from Tiranoff. So is this. This is one of the Descent uh, pieces of art. Fantasy Flight is notorious for recycling art in their books. Um, and that is another piece of art from uh, Descent as well. So that is awesome to see. So I, I would almost hazard a guess to say that our first uh, setting book is going to be Tiranoth. And I am super excited for that because it's a great world. They give you a lot of fiction in the Descent game and a little bit of flavor for it. And then there's a Descent campaign book that you can buy. It's a hardback book and uh, it's in my review as well and uh, gives you a lot of flavor of the background of the world so and of course any of the rune wars games give you that as well our second setting is steampunk uh, which would also be kind of fun um, character options setting specific gear so each setting does the same thing uh, weird war there we go our evil our evil nazi guy you know gotta have him um, I, I would almost be uh, tempted to uh run something in weird war um but i'm not a huge pulp guy modern day which is another thing i would be tempted to run everyday joe blows but um i think my first campaign is going to be because i'm already playing in a DD &D game and i'm already playing in a torg game um i think my first game will be a science fiction setting and i will probably cannibalize my uncharted worlds which is a very uh dungeon world-esque it uses the apocalypse engine uh i have my notes from that setting that game that i made up and i'll use those uh agencies and, and organizations in this game and just propel it forward um because this this looks pretty cool so we got laser rifles and pistols and all kinds of gear and super high-tech armor Space opera is the next setting. Um, combat drones for adversaries, hackers, nemeses, um, a whole bunch of oh, there's that's the Imperius Rex from Twilight Imperium. If if you know that awesome board game, so yeah, we've we've got definitely got some very cool options here. Fantasy Flight, since they own all those licenses, they can definitely go nuts with this and. Uh, the, the last half, three quarters of the book is the game master section. So uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff. So I can't say a good enough good stuff about this. I am very excited and uh, pleased to uh, be able to add this to my gaming library, and I'm actually going to run it. I think I think I want to run it and uh, hopefully run a good game for my friends. I think I think this will be a good time um, had by all. So anyway. <clears throat> that's my thoughts and, and ideas on uh, Genesis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, smash that like button. Hit the subscribe. It helps the channel out. And as always, as Mr. Mean says, peace and hair grease. And remember, be nice.